Hello folks, welcome to Outdoors with Bud. I'm your host, Bud Fields. Another segment I'm going to talk to you about on these artificial lures is fishing soft plastics. This happens to be one of my favorite ways to catch fish. Uh, soft plastics has been around for years and there has probably been more money won in bass fishing tournaments and more fish caught on some of the lures that I'm going to show you here today that has come a long ways and there, who knows what 10 years from now is going to bring. But soft plastics is just exactly what it is, soft plastics. Most of the lures that I'm going to show you are actually going to be used as what they refer to as bottom contact lures. They're going to have a, a weight on them. The catch, when you throw it out there, it's going to be worked along the bottom. You may raise your rod tip up just a little bit just to bring the lure up off the water, and then it's going to set it right back down to where when it's coming through the water, it's going to go up and down in a little bit of a cadence, which attracts a lot of fish. Now, uh, there's, there's many ways of rigging them. I'm, I'm going to go through first and explain to you some of the different ways to rig these soft plastics, and you can use it, you can use any of them, and all of them will work. Now, in this situation, in my left hand, this fishing line is going to be actually leading to your fishing rod. Now, the one thing you're going to notice, there's, there's a, a sinker that's going to float, uh, roll up and down, up and down. Now, if you want it, if you don't want that sinker to slide, you can take a little toothpick and right there where the, the line comes out the front of that, uh, sinker, you can press that in there and break that toothpick off and that will prevent it from sliding. Now, if you notice, there's, there's several little plastic beads on here. The reason for that is sometimes if you're fishing in real muddy water, you need a little bit of noise like some of the crankbaits that I showed you that had to rattle in it. Sometimes just that little bit of noise of this, of this going back and forth. Now these are small beads, so they're not very noisy. Sometimes just that little bit of noise will help a fish locate that. But this rig, this is what they refer to as a Texas rig. It's extremely weightless because as you can see, the hook is, is inserted to the nose, brought down, and, and the point is actually embedded in the worm's body. That way, your hook is not exposed. Now, after a little bit of time coming through weeds and everything, that hook point will gradually come out. All you do is kind of pinch the front of that worm. You can bring it up and rehook it and you're good to go. But this is referred to as a Texas rig. You throw it out there and uh, we've got uh, we've got a farm pond lined up for when the weather gets nice. Uh, Ed and I are going to go out there and I'm going to show you how to use these lures. And I think the water is going to be clear enough to where you can actually see how the lure is working in the water. And I'm going to show you how to use all these and how they work and hopefully maybe catch some fish. But this is a Texas rig. It's probably one of the most popular lures. Now, uh, I'll raise a rigging. Now, another way to rig it, I'm going to take this off of here and show you, is what they call wacky worm. Wacky worm, all you do, you're going to take this hook and you're going to come halfway the, the length of the worm. You're going to insert the hook and pull it completely through and out the other end. Now you see how that, that worm is dangled like that. When you throw that out there and it gets on the bottom, any action, as you can see what that worm's doing, it's going to actually flex back and forth like that. And sometimes that will really, that will really catch you a lot of fish. But the Texas rig and the wacky worm are two very, very effective ways. Now there's, there's another way here once I get my finger out of here. It's called the Carolina rig. Once again, this line in my left hand is the line that goes to your fishing rod. Now, somewhere down the line here, you're going to have a, a sinker, your, your weight. When you cast that out there, now you're going to notice there's a little uh, device here that's going to have on your, your weighted line comes down this way to this. When you throw that line out there, that worm, that, that lead sinker or tungsten sinker is going to be on the bottom. That worm is actually going to float off of the bottom. And all you do is with your rod, when you reel it in, you just kind of drag it. And you want to keep that, you want to keep that weight in contact with the bottom, just like you see on this tabletop. 
and that worm's going to be up here and that worm's going to be floating and and you can you can kind of drag this along and keep that worm coming through the through the grass and the weeds and everything and you're going to catch a whole lot of fish on that especially on points you come up to a reservoir or a lake it's got a point that comes out you use something like this uh carolina rig you're going to catch a lot of them and then there's another one and this is probably one of my most popular famous td 624 touchdown worms I worked with Tom Moore in Columbus, Indiana. Tom was the owner and founder of the company that manufactures this worm. If I was to come home one day and we had a rain and we had a flooded crawl space, I would probably throw a touchdown worm under there and catch a fish. No, that's, I'm just pulling your leg on that. But this is the only lure around that there's a guarantee on the package that says if you do not catch fish on this lure, you get your money back. Now, there's not very many lure manufacturers do that. Well, I worked several shows with Tom Moore all over the Midwest, and there was only one guy that ever come up to us and told us that he wanted his money back. Now, at the time, that lure was about a dollar a piece. He had a 60-mile drive one way, so that's 120 miles round trip to come back with a dollar lure. Well, when he showed me that lure, that lure looked like it had been through a meat grinder. And I told him, I said, you mean to tell me you didn't catch a fish on this? He said, well, I thought I should have caught more. Well, I thought if the guy needed that dollar that bad to go to all that trouble, I gave him his dollar back. But this worm, mm -hmm. this worm is completely weedless. It's got two hooks that's built in, snelled in, and it's got little rubber fingers that you put up here on the uh, hook and it makes it weedless. Well, I like to take the sinker and put right on the nose. Then when you were a kid, do you remember how you sidearm and you would throw a rock across the water and watch that rock skip? You can do the same thing with a little bit of practice with a fishing rod and using a touchdown worm. I have thrown a lot of worms up underneath a pier, places that the average guy couldn't get a crankbait or a spinnerbait or a topwater bait because he didn't know how to skip them. But that was where a lot of fish. I've been in tournaments coming in behind guys that had just come out of here and they would tell me, bud, there's no fish back here. We tried them. I went in and skipped under them piers where they couldn't present a lure and, and caught them. Now, the thing about this is when you get it in a package, it comes wrapped up just like this. It's bent over. The leader is tied around it. When it comes out, there, there's a bend in that hook. A lot of guys try to straighten that out. I don't. I leave that in there. That gives that action. When I cast it or you know, skip it under the pier, I put my rod tip down. As I'm coming in, that's coming back, and that, that tail is actually undulating, just like what you're seeing here, and that will infuriate a fish. But that's a TD624 worm. Uh, you can catch any kind of fish. Anything that swims will hit that. Now, here's another TD624. This is a root beer collar. Same exact worm except it's weightless. You can throw this out there and bring it along real slow on top of the water and it will act like a little snake swimming. And that's gonna catch a lot of fish. Now, some of these other plastics I'm gonna show you, you've probably seen, some of you never have. For instance, here in Indiana, we don't see very many scorpions. I've seen some of these advertised on the, on the internet and I ordered them and I started catching fish on this in, in a retention pond down at my daughter's house in Noblesville. The reason I think it was because the fish around Indiana had seen a lot of different lures. They had never seen a scorpion. They were hitting it because they didn't know what it was. But this thing, when you got it in the water, it's sitting. The tail will be up and it's actually floating. As you're, as you're hopping this across the bottom, that tail is wiggling. These little tentacles on the side is wiggling. And it's very irresistible to the fish. Now then, they've got plastic worms like this. This is a six inch worm. You can get these anywhere from about four inches to over 10 inches. Now, as you can see, this has got what they call a sickle tail. Most of the action on this is gonna be by this. If you rig it up Texas rig and you throw it out there, and as you're bringing it back, that tail is wiggling. Anything that puts out a, a, a commotion, the fish are gonna notice. Now here's one that has kind of come on pretty good here lately. Now this is my favorite color. This is called a June bug. Now it don't look anything like a bug, 
The June bug is the color of the pattern. It's, it's a purple with green metal flake in it. Now you can fish this hooked at the front of the nose. It makes a, it makes a great wacky worm rig. But th this, you can cast that out there. Some of them will float. If you had a little split shot or you put a little uh, piece of a toothpick in the nose, it will drop real slow. And a lot of times that fish will watch that worm sinking and it'll come up and bam, and they'll hit it. But it's a little meaty and you can cast them a long way. Now this one is an eye catcher. This is, of course, it's kind of faded out now, but this is methylate. This is a floating worm that you can use top water. You can rig it any other way. And this is effectively very well like on the Ohio River where it looks like you're fishing in coffee. Now this is another um, plastic uh, stick bait like a Konami. This, they call this a baby bass pattern. This looks nothing like a baby bass other than the coloration. It's kind of green and black on the top with a white belly, very similar to a bass. Now here's one that they call it a peanut butter. Now that don't look like a peanut butter sandwich to me, but there again, this is the color. This is actually two colors in one. On the top of it, it's got a red with different metal flake in it. And on the bottom, it's kind of a dark blue metal flake. Now this is a soft plastic that is referred to as a fluke. You throw that out there and it's just like a minnow. So it's got a little forked tail on it. You cast that out there and you can let that sink. And as that's going down, that tail is just shaking sideways. Or you can bounce it off the bottom and do it. Or you can throw it out there and let it come down the level. And it looks just like a minnow as it's swimming, kicking side to side. Now here's one that they started, that got real popular down in Alabama and some of the southern states. This is what they call a moo mile tail. Now there's a lot of action here. This has got the same basic warm body as this one, except this has got the sickle tail. This has got the fat tail here. And if you're fishing any kind of current, even if you just throw that worm out there and it's sitting on the bottom, that current's coming by and you can get an idea of what kind of action that tail is. And a lot of times that little movement right there is just enough to make a fish hit it. Now here's a 10 inch worm. It's got the same basic type of tail as this one, but it's not as long, but this is much longer. And they started using this for catching big bass down in the southern states, and a lot of people like them. Now another soft plastic, this is a skirted hula grub. It's got a little bonnet like tentacles on the front, and you can rig this with your hook in it. It's got little kicker legs, and as you're, as you're working this through the water, these little tentacles on the top are, are buzzing all around, and the legs are kicking. And things that you would think, you know, what, what are they going to think of next? Well, then they come up with some tube baits. There again, this is, this is a very hollow body, and it's got tentacles, which gives it movement. Now, you, I like to throw mine. they got like a stupid tube rig that it's hard to explain, but uh, you're going to be fed. You can fish this with a hook. It comes out on the top like some of the other lures, or you can make it where it comes back and hooks in. Now, this is hollow on the inside. I'm gonna give you a little tip. Years ago, they used to take Alka-Seltzer tablets, and when you dropped them in the water, it would fizz. It would, it would spit out bubbles and everything. That will be sitting on the bottom, and those bubbles will come out, and the fish thinks this thing is, is live, like a live man and is dying. They will gobble it up. Now here's one they refer to as a beaver tail. It's, it's flat. It's got a, like a beaver shaped tail. And it, and it splits and it split right here. It's, this one's never been used. So the, the tail is flopping. It's got these two little arms on the side that flops. You can, this is real good for skipping because this is flat and it'll go under there. Now here's another worm. I always like this because this is like a zipper worm. It's got uh, little fingers that sticks out, and it's got the curly tail on the bottom. And as you're working this, this acts kind of like an accordion. I mean, this worm will stretch out, and it makes little bubbles come out, and that's attractive. Another piece of soft plastic is a lizard. What makes a lizard effective? A lizard and a salamander, like when the bass are spawning and they're on their nest, the lizards and, and uh, salamanders and everything, they like to come up and get into that nest and eat the eggs. And it infuriates a bass. You toss this close to a bass nest, that fish might leave that nest, but it's not going to go too far. It's going to turn around and it's going to be very protective. It's going to be just like a, a female dog with a litter of puppies that don't want nothing to happen to the babies. 
But you work this up close to that nest, you better hang on because you're in for a fight. That's going to get in. Now, this is one that I actually designed myself when I was working a road shows with Tom Moore. Everybody had what they referred to as a creature bait. Okay. Tom told me if you ever come up with an idea, because I was fishing 90 tournaments a year. He said, if you ever come up with an idea, he said, I'll, I'll promise you I will listen to it. And he said, you can draw a sketch and I am no artist. I have trouble drawing flies. I said, but he said, I will listen to anything you have to say. And if you come up with something, he said, I won't promise you we'll make it. He said, but I'll listen to it. Well, everybody had a crawfish lure. I mean, everybody was making them. And to protect yourself from patents at that time, you had to make three changes on a lure to make sure that, you know, you wouldn't infringe on somebody's patent. Okay. I did. I designed this one. One thing that I added to it was on the side, it's got a little keel. If you threw a regular crawdad lure out in the water, it drops straight. With this little keel, it will actually kind of fall. I'm over exaggerating. It's not falling that far, but instead of dropping straight down, it'll cascade from side to side dropping down. Okay, another thing is I made the pinchers longer. Also made the tentacles on the front longer. Most of them were very short. And another thing, which wasn't a big deal, most of them, they never had any kind of eyes. We put two little plastic eyes that actually stuck up. So I told Tom about this and he said, let's try it, let's make it. Well, we called this originally the bud bug. Instead of the bed bug, it was a bud bug. And I told him, I said, what colors can we make it? He can make them in, in like a thousand different colors. I wanted the June bug, which was my personal favorite. This, where they referred to as the red bug, is, is green. It's got red and black in it. And we also made it in, a, in like a uh, uh, orange and black pattern. We had a guy that was a professional bass tournament come up to our booth at the Indianapolis Boat Sport and Travel Show. And he wanted to know if we had something new. Well, I showed him this. And he liked the looks of them. He said, I'd like to try some of them. Well, we were selling these by the quarter pound, and I think at the time you could get probably 30 of these in a, in a quarter pound. He left our booth with one pound of the three colors that we had. The very next year, he came back and he wanted more. He won three major bass tournaments with that. I don't know why I couldn't do that, but I guess he, the, the fish read his articles and not mine. But that, that was a fantastic deal and on up to the time tom passed away every show we went to we had a big supply of the bud bugs but soft plastics is is so much fun uh you can you can start out using like tube jigs uh, early in the year or something small like like the score pin and then as the water temperature gets warmer you can start using your texas rig your alabama not yeah your alabama rig and and uh, everything and you don't want to overlook your skirted jigs. But most of these, like I say, is a bottom contact lure. You're going to be making contact with the bottom. And when we get out of the pond, I'm going to show you how do you, you can throw the Carolina rig, how to do the Texas rig, and hopefully we can see inside of the water how, the, how, the, how it looks in the water. And soft plastics caught a lot of fish, and, and there's going to be more to come in the future. So... Uh, Thanks a lot, folks, and, and stay tuned for further episodes. Thank you.